Hello everyone, this is Nate from GameReviewHQ.net, the best place for game reviews, bringing you my first look on Triad Wars. Triad Wars is an online MMO prequel to Sleeping Dogs, which was released in 2012. This game has been in beta since 2015, late 2014, with no exact release date in sight. Now, the game is still in closed beta, which means you'll need a key either from someone else or from the developers. Speaking of the developers, this game is being published by the well-known Square Enix, known for developing everything from Just Cause 2, to Secret of Mana, to the Final Fantasy series. Now, again this game is in closed beta, so the game is much less than complete, but it has a lot going for it already. Before getting into the thick of things, you need some basic information on what the game is about and what it's like. The game takes place in a very open-world city based off of contemporary Hong Kong, the same as Sleeping Dogs. While coming three years after Sleeping Dogs, this game is actually considered a prequel as far as Sleeping Dogs canon goes. There is talk of Sleeping Dogs having a sequel coming out, but Square Enix has not released any official information on this yet, just that they are working on it, and maybe in development. Graphically, the game looks excellent. With an odd mixture of high-quality assets and an almost cel-shaded style, the game looks great and the graphic style works surprisingly well for it. The game is really a smorgasbord of different ideas from games and game styles that are popular now. The game really takes a lot of from Grand Theft Auto Online, and sometimes it feels like the only reason this game was released was to try and combat and kind of leech off of the massive popularity that has been Grand Theft Auto Online lately. Now let's get into the beginning of the game. Starting out, you're able to choose from three different triads. The 18K, the Sun An Yi, and the Xing Wu. Currently, which triad you choose has very little effect on how you actually play the game. It only really serves to adjust what your original character looks like, which you can easily edit later. There still is no option to create a female character, but developers are planning to add that in a future patch. The combat is like that of the original Sleeping Dogs, which borrowed a lot from the Arkham games, whose combat style has been copy and pasted heavily in recent years. You have light and heavy attacks, as well as fatality-like attacks. These fatality attacks have brutal endings that can make combat a bit quicker and sometimes more engaging, although they can get repetitive. You can play either using a mouse and a keyboard, or some gaming peripheral, like a gamepad. AI starts to get much smarter as you level up, which has been improved in a recent patch. Like most mainstream games now, bullets are not very fatal, and even if you're being shot at a good amount, you're not going to be damaged very realistically. You can take a couple shots before being able to engage them hand to hand. This makes hand to hand combat and melee combat much more plausible and possible even when you're going up against someone armed with a gun. A notable change in the gameplay is the nerfing of the cleaver. Anyone who played a large amount of Triad Wars before the patch in April will know that the cleaver was an incredibly powerful melee weapon, and was possibly the most powerful weapon in the game, including guns. Before the patch, you could go on raids and take down a whole safe house, using nothing but a knife used for preparing meats. The dev team decided they would have to nerf and patch the game, so that this was not the case. While some were upset over the dethroning of one of their favorite weapons, ultimately it was a good choice, as the all-powerful cleaver took away not only from the game's realism, but also from the integrity of the combat system. As I mentioned briefly, the game features something called raids. If you know MMOs, you know that raids are a common thing in them, from World of Warcraft on to all of the other MMOs that there are. Most games that are massively multiplayer have some form of raids. Now, raids can differ from game to game exactly what they do, but in this game, they tend to give you more items and cash. Currently, raids are the only real interaction that you can have with other people online, even though it's not direct interaction. It's interesting as it is an MMO, but it's really limited as to what is online. The online is much closer related to uh, the experience you would get from Clash of Clans or other mobile MMOs. You never directly interact with any players, just their bases and what they have already set up. So they could even be online or offline, 
and you would have no idea. The dev team does however have plans to expand the game to have actual interaction between players. They don't have any sort of information about what exactly they plan for online, but it's probably safe to assume that it would be something not too different from Grand Theft Auto Online, as this game does borrow heavily from that. Another possibility is some form of online car chase. As this is heavily included in the game, but never really utilized in any of the missions too heavily. Now, these raids take place by attacking opposing triads, which are manned by other online players. Not at the time though, however. You're attacking and raiding the safe house of others, and you have to protect your own safe house from others. Your safe house is basically your base where you can manage and upgrade different things, using your in-game money, but also real money, as most online games are. When you are away from your base, there will be an NPC acting as you to defend your base. When you interact in other people's base, you will fight someone like this too. It's a representation of the other person's character, but it is only a programmed AI and not actually them. Since the game is free to play, the income for developers and publishers would appear to be coming from the gold, which is paid for with real money that can be used to purchase items and other things. Thankfully the game has had a surprisingly large amount of integrity, and you're able to convert your cash into gold at a decent exchange rate. That means you won't have to pour your real money into this game just to get some cosmetic upgrades, new cars, or cards, which I will get into later. Now, in your safe house there are a few things you can upgrade to get more missions, make more money, and protect your safe house. There are currently no pay to win scenarios there, and all things that take real time to finish have to be done this way with no exceptions, but this could change upon release to try and pull in more cash. The final mechanic worth mentioning about Triad Wars is a system of cards that they have. These cards have various upgrades, weapons, and other benefits that you can get from them. The cards themselves can be gotten by doing various missions, or they will just be given to you randomly at your safe house. They also can be purchased from the game shop using gold, which again, is either your real world money or a conversion of about $10,000 cash to 10 bars of gold unless this changes. While this can be beneficial, this was really not that huge of a game changer, and the game really doesn't feel like it's that much of a pay to win situation, as you'll do fine without buying any of these cards really. Overall, the game is very good for a beta, and does not feel like many being currently released, especially on Steam. While the game does have some major flaws and many glitches, they're being patched. The developers have been doing a very good job of updating the game and have been paying attention to actual feedback and what people are saying about it. It definitely is an integrity move to release the beta and make it completely free without charging people. But it is an MMO, which are often fee free even in their full version. While it seems great, if the game was not an MMO, it makes you wonder if Square Enix would release it without charging for the beta. The glitches and bugs never made the game unplayable, and hopefully the full release will be almost completely bug free, with the exception of the few that always need to be patched. The game visually looks great and the models all look polished and run good on most computers. I didn't get to mentioning it earlier, but the sound design is very solid. The sound effects and action sound good and feel right. The music is also done very nicely. While the actual music is pretty sparse in it, when it does show up, it's nice. The city sounds alive, and where the music is used, it's good. It gives you the tone and the feeling that you would expect from something taking place in Hong Kong. Overall, even with the slight balancing issues and the lack of any immediate multiplayer interaction, the game is a fun MMO. It blends the genre of what it's doing very well. The sandbox elements are fun and the world feels very open. The combat is good, and while it feels similar to Grand Theft Auto Online, it does enough to separate itself out, and make it its own thing. It feels like Watch Dogs, and it feels unique. The game is fun, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. This has been NativeGameReviewHQ.net, and I hope you learned all that you want to know about Triad Wars.